Welcome back, everyone, to Hearts of Iron 4, Kaiser Redux course. I'm your host, Mr. Muckle Evers, you probably know by now. But refugees return to America. Uh, the ceasefire has been an end to American Civil War, at least for now. And so the vast majority of refugees have begun returning home. The fact that the ceasefire will eventually end. And the conflict undoubtedly renewed does not sit well with many, who have decided to either stay in Canada for good or head for destinations further afield. Regardless of where they go, the refugee crisis in Canada appears to be over. A welcome relief. So we lose 30,000 manpower, which sucks. But we lose, we lose Project Samaritan, which gives us way more political power. Monthly population goes way down. Consumer goods goes, factors goes down for us. We lose construction speed, factory output. And also we're back at war, and we basically restarted the American Civil War. With us pushing in. But with the ceasefire, both sides of the conflict, I believe, have reduced divisions. 23... 1048, so it should be a pretty much kick walk pushing in, walking in, as the world is uh, falling apart all around us and whatnot, but you know what, that's not our concern for now. Well, New York City, fantastic, it's ours now. Oh, hello. Oh, Gloucester Gladiators, ooh. Of course, we need more air XP as well, but you know, whatever, we're working on that. Improved carrier holes, light ship holes. Um, dreadnought holes are nice, but they just cost so much to build. Kind of like carrier holes. Um, don't get me wrong, I love these dreadnoughts, but... Um, these engines, not good. And we have no enable XP right now, anyways. Make some more convoys. As we're just gonna push straight on in, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, push straight on in, and honestly, there's not that many divisions. And the division count is thick. It's very thick. We have no political power, of course, like normal. And we're doing foreign contractors right now, though. Where's foreign contractors? Uh, we read that earlier. Contact the loyalists. Not every supporter of the monarchy was able or willing to flee Britain. There are many back home just waiting for the chance to take up arms for our cause, or maybe more usefully to pass us information on the syndicalist plans for placements. New naval officers. While the officers of the British Royal Navy have much to teach us, they have also much to learn. Naval warfare is rapidly changing, and the time has come to update our methods and bring new blood into the Admiralty. Upgrade the fleet. Building new ships will be a problem for Canada's small shipbuilding industry. Thus, we must concentrate on upgrading those we have, researching new parts and guns, and learning how to quickly fit them to the hulls. Naval ba uh, Bomber Program. The FFA, oh, FAA, was founded soon after the Great War as the aviation arm of the Royal Navy, and its officers advocate for new theory of naval warfare built around the aircraft carrier as a primary weapon of the fleet. Naval bombers can threaten any fleet, and planes are starting to become a fearsome weapon of war. Bomber Program. Sound of modernizing bomber aircraft fleet. The competition between leading aircraft designers will lead us to the best design and advance the state of our aerospace industry in the process and fighter program. Sound of modernizer air fleet, fighter air fleet fleet. A competition between leading aircraft designers. Uh, yeah, I just read this one basically for the other one. Uh, Parallel the Red Armada. During the Revolution, the majority of the Royal Navy stayed loyal to their sovereign, and yet they were outliers, although only a few. They've slowly their honorable legacy of British ways by not only betraying their king, but also providing the foundation of their Unionist Navy. Thankfully for us, that ragtag band of radical upstarts will be simple to sabotage and slowly dismantle, um, just like any armada that threatened us over our long history. What is this one? Seas, Shetland, and Orkney. The Northern Isles are not only battled to reestablishing control over Scotland, they are home to a scap of flow naval complex. By regaining control over both Orkney and Shetland, we shall deprive the traders of the shipbuilding capabilities in the north. It also ensure a smoother landing in the beaches of the highlands. Blessedly seas the islands. We've been on an outcome of naval sabotage, as well as the presence of British forces in the area, in a contact with the British resistance. Man of Isle, Man of, of Man Mutiny. Known as Elan Vannin to the very distinct autochthons of the island, Man is vital for comfortably control the Irish Sea and project our power both over the Lost Home and the Lost Dominion. We have to send a little men to connect with their clandestine royalist cells both in the autonomous twin Tinwald legislature and the man garrison in stage of Grand, Grand Mutiny. The Union should not have a problem with the Manx people demanding independence after all. Don't the Reds love to break the chains? Or fill a common goal. While we have our differences with the German Empire, we cannot worry about old wounds right now. The focus is on reclaiming Great Britain. Thus our political leaders have suggested a treaty of non aggression with the Germans, at least for the time being, and rinse the Red Bill. In the United States, we're a con continental powerhouse and the steel belt was their industrial heart. Originally known for vast manufacturers and construction fell under the claws of syndicalist radicals as economic conditions worsened. With their boots marching through these lands, we have a chance to reverse the dis decline and purify the once shining belt of steel of, of steel and smoke. Great Lakes Crown Corporations. While our side of the water Americans call the steel belt is already well established, crown corporations that need to be extended across the water. The Great Lakes region is home to many resources of which direct state control is vital for continued prosperity. These new crown companies shall rise out of the ruins of the old companies such as Ford and General Motors will be allowed to continue operations under new management and strip the rust from the steel belt. 
With the years of economic freefall in the United States and political radicalization being particularly strong in those states, the steel belt has fallen into disrepair and destitution. The situation has become so dire that many locals begin to call the region the Rust Belt alongside the more popular Red Belt used by political pundits. The potential lying in the great factories of Detroit and similar places is still immense, just waiting to be harvested. We should do anything in our power to polish the steel belt and make sure it runs at full capacity. The Entente Air Training Scheme expands! The French National State is elected to join our tra air training program. Already young French pilots are training in the prairies to take part, and more experienced air marshals have come with them to lend their own techniques and advance advice to our directors. Excellent. Oh, as well as Greece. Great. As you can see, we're at war with the Pacific States now. Um, just like we did with the, the normal United States of America, they've lost actually quite a few guys. We lost about 8,000, which is not good, but we didn't call any of our allies in. Albania is a major power now. Wow. An Australasian Republic? Representatives from the Australasian Confederation arrived today at an audience for the King, formally requesting the repatriation of the Constitution. This would, in fact, transform the Australasian Confederation into a Republic, cutting all but ceremonial ties of the British Crown. They say they fully intend to remain loyal allies of the UK, of Great Britain, and Canada, and this is technically within the right to proclaim, although there are some who suggest this is treasonous to talk even so until the 1936 election. They were under the direct rule of the, their Governor General according to the emergency measures, and before that, a British colony. Who are they to, decla their, who are they to declare themselves a republic? The Australasian Confederation would be nothing if it were not for the support of the British Crown. Bunch of social democrats. Free to govern themselves? They cut ties with us, we cut ties with them. What do we go with absolutely not? John Curtin, huh? I won't prove relations with you, though. I wanted that political power as well. And setting a rule southwards, now that we've consolidated a rule over the New England and Great Lakes region, we can begin integrating the remaining portion of the steel belt. Oh, wow. Build arms factories? I mean, this would be nice. We don't really need it, though. Oil and Yukon. Exceeding rule southwards, IEDC, influence the monarchy, support the prime minister. We're going to spend a part for that. We need more war support to do this, huh? Oh. Oh, Miles. Americans of war. Yeah. Oh. And as well as uh, Hawaii wants to join us too. Oh, Hawaii declared war on them. Good job, Hawaii. And uh, let us begin. The errant son returns. After 150 years of being a par, what was once the 13 colonies has returned to the British crown. The transgressions of the War of 1776 have finally been rectified on the eastern seaboard of the North America, from New Brunswick to Houston lies under control. The king is taking a tour of what was previously Washington to the chagrin of many. Facing almost a raucous cacophony of booze and jeers from the onlooking crowds, the queen patiently waited for Mounties and other police to quiet down before the crowd, uh, commencing the first speeches of the British crown on American soil in two centuries. While the American armies collapsed, fighting still continues in every corner. Our patrols from the Everglades to the Rocky Mountains have been a harried and assaulted from resistance groups. Every single faction of the turbulent American political landscape have abandoned their feuds instead of focusing their total efforts on undermining our presence. Our administration stretched thin and requests our new American territory to be dissected into smaller, more manageable states, however. That's likely to aggregate the opportunity Americans even more. What should our course of action be? To dissolve the very notion of America with its territory split into various dominions. Americans will have the kingdom. Or are not giving American an inch. An inch. Oh, my finger slipped. And also, I do want to quarrel all this stuff, but it's going to take a lot of time to do so. Um, we can't write full conscription because we'll need to eventually. We need more political power. Uh, we can do this eventually once we get more at war. 75% or more war sport. 76% uh, war sport, at least. And if we have to go to war with the international, well, we got to fight Mexico because they're in it. So. so we'll take these guys out. We're on the Entente down here. We'll help take out these guys. And then we'll start focusing on jumping into here and jumping into Spain. Even though the French. Uh, has done quite well, actually. The Germans have finally pushed in a little bit into the French territory. Um, the Union of Britain is dying to the East Germans. Yeah. And the Germans are actually pushing back against the Russians. So, things are... They're going. Serbia is nice and thick. Austria is actually losing a, now to... Or actually winning against the Socialist Republic of Italy. Um, other than that, we're doing okay down here. India, uh, the Dominion of Delhi has united. Afghanistan is the smallest I've ever seen it. Oh, good, they're at war. And they're all killing each other over here. So, just giving you a little heads up and update on what's going on. Uh, as we're doing royalist economic capitalism, of course. Uh, Gods of the Empire. Or National Security Act. Civil unrest has exploded since the king took, or queen took executive power. Syndicalists and American spies roam the streets unchecked, and the revolutionaries plot every moment to replicate it in Canada, what came to be in Britain. These insidious hazards must be dealt with swiftly by any means necessary. For the first time in many years, uh, the guns have fallen silent in the continental United States. 
A clear winner of the, of the war in America has emerged, not one of the many splintered governments born out of the chaos, but rather America's northern neighbor, Canada. Such an occurrence, unexpected by even the most pessimistic within the American command, have shocked the world to its very core as Canada, long outshadowed by the U.S., now comes to occupy the entirety of the territory. This outcome is mutually unacceptable to all American factions, who rem remnants have banded together in a last-ditch effort to oppose Canadian rule. As the dust settles, it's become clear that America, at least America, dear to those who inhabited the once great nations no more. Supporters of American factions from all walks of life stand frozen, unable to comprehend the events that have just transpired. Perhaps in the years to come, a sense of normal will return as a member of America fades away and America's status as an integral part of Canada becomes unquestioned. We've reached the most, American, the most important moment in American history, its end. Crusader King. The Queen, now truly in, in charge of the Empire, we are last free to focus on one great purpose for which the exile government exists, the liberation of Great Britain. Whether or not we believe absolutism to be the right in the long term, we must embrace strong leadership so long as we are in exile, for only that can free us from the cynicalist scum. Like Arthur of Camelot before us, we show repulsive invaders, like Arthur we show repulsive occupiers, and like Arthur we show triumph against the desperate odds. Like Arthur we shall see Britannia fair and restore the island to the lions of King England, their true and rightful ruler, God save the King. What do we got here? Mm, yeah, why not? And then we're going to jump around to uh, God Save the Empire. A cynic would say that the Empire died on the day of the Revolution. A cynic would say that Exile would never hear the peril of Big Ben again, despite her dire straits. We've proven that the Empire story isn't over, and it's only beginning. The Empire shall breathe once more and be even more powerful and glorious than the ones we've lost. I'm going to need, you know what? We could do industry, we could do armaments, but I want to do we need ships. Our enemies are all across the ocean. We cannot rely on the aging British ships to hold us over. We need the support of our fleet. Support our fleet. And prove it. Or place the shops they lost as they fall. Um, well, let's see. In the chaos following the disgraceful revolution, our forces stationed in the West Indies weren't able to hold every territory we possessed. That allowed the soldier thugs of Jose Maria Orlando to press a ridiculous claim to occupy British Honduras for Guatemala. While follows continued oppression of the Anglophone and native populations. It's time to end that situation and return the colony to its crown. White House raised. Today at 12 p.m. The king's guard approached with the imposing white building with torches in hand. Its insides have been gutted of anything of any historical or practical significance, and just illustrious marble outside remains, a sh hollow show of its former glory. Much like the nation it once represented, without pomp or parade, the guards tossed the flaming torches throughout the window, open windows and stepped back as they caught the gallons of gasoline that coated the inside of the building. Within minutes, the White House was in a blazing inferno. Uh, flame shooting from its many windows and doors and climbing high into the sky. As the soldiers watched solemnly and with grim determination to see their job done, the citizens of Washington, now Georgetown, cried out almost in unison. They were the grief of a nation made manifest. The crowds that gathered to watch the burning of the White House numbered in the thousands and many feared they would ride, overwhelm their new British masters and start a new revolution right there and then there. However, it appears the fears are unfounded. As the crowd watched an alternating, alternating stunned silence of powerful grief, and nobody moved. Finally, after the building burned for almost an hour and a half, a rain finally came and snuffed out the flames. It was too late for the White House, though, which soon collapsed into a mess of timbers, shattered stone and ashes, destroyed the legacy of those traitors to, his maj to her majesty. Jackson becomes Arnold, Jefferson City becomes Pearson, Washington chain becomes to Southern British Columbia. Who needs stability? And of course, we want to do Old Folk Common Goal, which we were last time. Rectify the Oregon boundary dispute. President Paul campaign 54 a fight, demanding nearly the entire province of British Columbia annexed into the United States. Well, the good people of BC avoided this dark fate. The citizens below the 49th parallel weren't too lucky. While the Americans stole our rightful territory back in 1844, fate returned Oregon back to Canadian hands, sparing the citizens of the Pacific Northwest from the horrors of the Civil War. Now, with Oregon back in our hands, we can decide what to do with it. Shall we merge into two Columbias? Shall we keep the American border? Shall we admit a new province of Oregon? The fate must be decided, of course. What do we got here? So, oh my god. Oh, look at this. Expand dock cards. What is this? Resistance must be less than 25%. Well, in Ohio, put down American resistance. Oh, we need at least one division here. Interesting. One of the following must be true. Interesting, okay. So... Ooh. Hey, support's really high. Royal address. That's war support, which, yeah. We got some more stuff here. We're gonna do... South African Federation? Sure, why not? New England recruitment. That would be bad. So, despite long odds, America's now under a grasp. While we'd hoped that the Americans would welcome a rule, it appears that all managers of Yankee rebels have banded together to finally oppose a rule. If America be integrated into Canada, we must first crush all those who continue to hold out hope for the fool's dream of the lost America. So, we're going to put down a lot of resistance here. South Carolina. We got a lot of political power to spend. Oh my god. In the near islands, send the army. We could use more weekly stability. We could use this too. Uh, we could save that for later. Save this for later. Uh, I like this one, but we're almost done doing all the stuff. We'll get that eventually. Send the army. I do want more stability. 
We could really use more stability. Oh god. Yeah, we can do that anyways. And that's what we got. The new knights of the round table. As Her Majesty continues to make a royal prerogative that had not been fixed in such or flexed in such a manner for centuries. The circles around the Queen, her, her very advisors, generals, and other influential people have doubled their efforts to ingratiate themselves with him. Or her. Every group, no matter the size or content, knows that if they want to have any laws passed or regulations changed, they need to win the favor of the Queen and their wishes could become reality. With such a situation has long been the case in politics, having all power in a single woman has radically changed the landscape. Her most ma gracious majesty, of course, now blinded the state of affairs. While not happy with the situation due to the good influence of the, that these figures who lobby the king or the queen emperor hold, she cannot simply wave her hand and be done with it, for to do so would surely spell public relations nightmare. What the queen can do, however, is, to change, is the change of how this business is conducted. By royal decree, Her Royal Highness Elizabeth II has formally established the so-called Royal Council of State. In short, this new body gives them a much more streamlined way for the process of petitioning the Queen, while also creating a way for the Queen to delegate authority to any matters to her most trusted advisors. In the spirit of the round table, the legendary King Arthur, the Queen treats those who point into the Council as not equals, granting respect those hitherto unseen. The members of the Council themselves, the Queen's most trusted advisors, have also taken to the example of the Knights of the Round Table, serving the Queen to the best of their abilities. While far from a true round table, and the members of its far from true knights, the Royal Council of will no doubt serve as both an example of cooperation with the Crown, but also show a, a, the reward for loyalty. The Queen is far from her days as a party animal. Okay, we're joining in the war now. As you see, we just went to war, and we're fighting a bunch of Mexicans. There you go. You know, time's moving to reclaim uh, Europe. Uh, it's only took us until basically 1943. I figure. It's fine. Hopefully we're not pissing off too many people here. Oh, we're fighting those guys in the Chinese Union too? Well, okay. okay. Chief of Staff. With the War of Syndicalist Pond now, uh, Queen, uh, Queen... King Elizabeth II. King... Oh, we should have done this one earlier. We could have got Warsport that way. Darn it. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is pressuring the Prime Minister to make a choice as who will lead the Canadian forces overall. Unless use wisely, the British commanders are skilled and will please the King Queen as she wants to see one of his own in charge of the invasion. The Canadian commanders, however, will be far more popular back home. Ironside is still a man for the job. Political power. Montgomery Massenburg will get us to London. Harry Crayer is our new uh, commander. That's, that's good. Uh, Kenneth Stewart is a man for Canada. That's not bad. We could use that population, too. Honestly, I haven't done this one in a while, so we're going to do this one just because I want a little more manpower, too. Welcome. Slightly more attacking and whatnot, but, you know, whatever. What do we got here? Halifax. Um, uh, sure, why not? I'm going to keep doing all these war propaganda. Oh, you exist. Mo Modify Canadian Broadcasting Corporation? Wow, actually, you get more daily political power by quite a bit. The new Canadian Broadcasting Corporation has been a great success. It reaches everywhere across the nation. And now their proposals use that to our advantage. The CBC's programming can be turned towards spreading propaganda and firing up the Canadians for the cause. Oh, ooh, ooh advanced cruiser holes. Don't mind if we do. Um, but yeah, we're going to beat up Mexico and whatnot. I mean, it's not going to be that difficult. I'll take out Belize as well. Let's see what's next. Sonar. Radar. Faster engines. We got enough naval XP for this cruiser armor 4. Light guns. Um, aircraft facilities. Anti-air. Definitely some anti-sub stuff. You know what? We're going to grab a lot of anti-sub stuff. It's very expensive to do this, but you know. Heavy guns fleet. Carrier task force. Bonuses for HP. Production output. HP. HP it is. You're gone, you're gone, you're here. We are heavily out of steel. What do we got here? Now we're now seeking more stuff here too. So now that we're all in the war, we can finally take this fight here, and then, like we said earlier, the Germans are smashing through the French, which is not good. They're doing a little better in there too, but um, we'll see, because after this, war propaganda. Let's go Canada. We've got 30 days of this. And then we've got to... Uh, Beat the Schneikies out of uh, a couple others. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Couple convoys lost. Nice. Keep seeking them. You guys can just do this and you'll be fine. Visible ink. Very nice. Well, let's continue putting down resistance. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine too. This convoy's nice. Oh! Marcus, go take that over, huh? 
So now Cerebi wants to buy HMS Lion. Cerebi, which is in the process of industrialization and rearmament. They're having to buy the old outdated battle cruiser, uh, HMS Lion, which will become the flagship of, the, of their navy. Surely they do better relations with the Serbian government. It can help, help them take it on the navy, navy's other, uh, neighbors. Oh, yeah. I'm okay with that. Oh, does this just continue to repeat? Oh, then we're just wasting political power here. Putting down resistance. Oh, God. That sucks. Because right now it's 21%. Why is it going up? Probably because of a very low stability. Yeah. <clears throat> Mexico, please just capitulate. Death charges. And what else? 1940s. Defense carrier holes. Sure. Influence. I know it might be getting a British Royal Tour. That'd be kind of nice. Oh, Mexico City's great. Good job, guys. Smoke generators, event subs. We just don't have enough resources for anything here. Good, and then we're gonna do this one. Old foe, common goal. Happy 1943, everybody. Alcapulco. Yalisco. Guadalajara. All of Madrid. Looks like these guys aren't doing so well. The Reds, which is good. Psychological warfare. Maintenance companies, you know what, I don't care if this is ahead of time, we're going to do it anyways. We need that military police going. Cranking. Let's get rid of them. Divisions and I we still go with Baja over here, but that's fine. Guatemala, we got a fruit company. Good, good, good. <clears throat> good, get some of this too. Be nice. Ooh. I do want to see what they're going to say to us here. Collect all the remnants of these guys. Good. Jimmy signs a treaty. The agreed to say, uh, sign a treaty. We've now access to the ports, help us with the planning of the reconquest of the home isles. Great. Hey, that stability is great. And we'll deal with these guys, and then we're just going to shove off and head over to Spain, take out maybe southern France, and maybe invade the Union of Britain next. The peace upon Mexico. Now that our brave soldiers have successfully occupied the entire lands of Mexico, we're now in full possession and negotiating a mutually beneficial peace in exchange for the full incorporation of Mexico into our temporary military administration. The talks of a possible ceasefire would seem like the obvious option, so within a command convinced that the forces, which have foolishly chosen to support the class Mexican entity, have been severely weakened, and they are confident that our arms are more than capable of taking out the entire alliance. Decisions up to the highest heads of our government. Shall we call for peace or shall we continue the fight? Peace with them. But we just strip annex them. Wait, so Iberian Federation, Socialist Union of France, white peace with, with us. We go to white peace with everyone else, we annex them. No, I think we'll take the entire line. So we get, get some war support here too, which is fantastic. Uh, Guatemala returns uh, Belize. The Guatemalans, seeing the inevitability of being vanquished by Antan forces that they refuse, have smartly chosen to return us to the territory of British Honduras. Now that Belize is back in our hands, the question of what is to be done with Belize has been raised. The West Indies Federation has maintained a claim to the territory ever since it fell into the Guatemalan hands. However, many prefer British Honduras remain under Canadian jurisdiction. Keep on British Honduras for ourselves. We're getting core on it. Yeah, as much as I'd like to do that. I don't take it for ourselves. That's very nice. Look at that. Fantastic. Now we're poised to take out these guys if we really need to. Uh, which I don't think we'll really need to. But hey, this is the core. 
That's not bad. It's only 67,000 people there, but overall, that's not bad. I'll still take it. And the French are slowly losing. But we have Ace Pipe as well as we're heading to Europe. And we have landed, everybody. We are now in uh, Cornwall. I almost called this Plymouth for some reason, but Cornwall. And uh, we're, we invaded with the Marines. They've done very, very well. We've contributed about 10% of total war score. Not bad. And then, uh, yeah, we're doing all right. Unibrand's going to fall. We're adding more soldiers in here, hopefully quickly. And, yeah, we're doing A-OK. -okay. The Ost Germans, the East Germans, have... Well, they kind of floundered a little bit. They've not really been pushing very hard at all, so we decided to show up, finally. There's a lot of guys here. Oh, wait, we're on the left. We're, we're here, so we get still put in a lot of resistance everywhere, so... Uh, I don't want to spend all my political power for that yet. Establish the province of Oregon. With the Oregon Territory once more fully under British control, we can reorganize the former American state of Washington, Idaho, and Oregon into one cohesive subdivision, simply known as Oregon, which we admitted into con the Confederation as Canada's 13th province. That would be fantastic. Uh, influence of the monarchy, we're pretty good. And the Home Isles, contact with British loyalists. Once we've gained a foothold on the British mainland, the loyalists we have been in contact with will be prepared to rise up and fight on our behalf. 125,000? Yes. Our attempts to contact the loyalists remaining in the Union of Britain have been quite successful. As we thought, they've been collecting numbers and equipment since the fall of the Empire, and while they haven't the strength to take on the syndicates, syndicalists by themselves, we're more than ready to rise up now that we have a foothold in Cornwall. They have gathered in the hills of central England and are prepared to attack at our command. Look at those guys. You want to be led by Bert Hoffmeister? Sure. What even is this template? 13 comments, which is actually pretty decent. First, a loyalist elite division, huh? Hey. We're very close to freeing them. From that swine over there. And we got him. Nice. I wouldn't mind all of them being that, but whatever. There we go. We definitely don't need nearly as many divisions, honestly. Yeah, we really don't. We're spreading out, boys and girls. We're gonna make the queen proud. Sure. Why not? Wales is almost fully liberated. Well, once we get that here. Hopefully, it's only 11%, which is not good enough. If anything, we're going to sacrifice France for all the UK islands. Beautiful. Smash them at Oxford. Yeah, that should really just drastically go for us. Land combat damage, destroyed enemy planes, material support received. British exos has been suspected of espionage. Several days ago, a low-ranking official within the Queen Elizabeth's Privy Council was arrested on charges of espionage. A spy, it seems, started concluding or colluding with officials from the Union of Britain after coming to the UK, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Canada. The story's gone public and the British press is playing it off as a betrayal of the country by the exiles themselves. Flames which have been fanned by recent comments by the Queen. Defending the officials of a personal friend, now that we're left with allowing the trial to be played out with the full eyes of the public upon it, allowing Queen Elizabeth the chance to intervene despite the damage to the monarchy, or intervening ourselves and handing the trial over to the British government in exile to be handled quietly despite the outrageous would cause. A lot of queen in interview. Let's play out a trial. Intervene and hand the trial over to the British. I don't want to do that one. What's that about? Fall of London, the beginning of the end. Bomber program, fantastic. Chalk River Labs. Oh, we can't do it, darn it. That sucks. Upgrade the fleet. Building new ships will be a problem for Canada's smallest shipbuilding industry. That's the most constant upgrading those we have, researching new parts and guns, and learning how to quickly fit them to the holes. Fantastic. So since we're here, we're going to do a couple more if we can. New naval officers. While the officers of the British Royal Navy have much to teach us, they also have much to learn. Naval warfare is changing rapidly, and the time has come to update our methods and bring new blood on the Admiralty. Naval bomber program. The FFA was founded soon after the Great War as an aviation arm of the Royal Art Navy, and as the officers advocate for a new theory of naval warfare built around the naval aircraft carrier as a primary weapon of the fleet. Naval bombers can threaten any fleet, and plans are starting to become a fearsome weapon of war. Oh, just smashing all these guys. Oh, and it's literally just us. God, this is awesome. This is why we, you know, had to make sure that the exhaust took... Oh, wow. They delivered 1.9 million casualties from the Germans, while we've delivered three quarters of a million. Yeah, we're way more efficient than they are. We don't need to kill, kill that many people off to do all this stuff. Oh, 
Peace Conference. And we have it. We'll do what we can, but I think I'll end the episode here so that when we start the next time, we can start with the United Kingdom and then play around there because I do want the Mexico as well. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll hopefully have the United Kingdom good and back. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.